tumor anesthesia oxygen toxicity. Hypoxia is exposing cells to higher than required partial pressures of oxygen. It can occur due in normal bowel conditions when breathing high inspired concentrations of oxygen at one atmosphere or hyperbaric conditions when the FiO2 can be normal or less than 0.21 as the partial pressure of arterial oxygen will be higher than during conditions at one atmosphere. Oxygen transfer between the inspired gas and the mitochondria is mainly by diffusion down a pressure gradient. The highest Partial pressures of oxygen will always be in the lungs, especially the alveoli, as the conducting areas are protected. And thus, the lungs are the greatest site of toxicity. The total dose of oxygen is the risk factor for oxygen toxicity. And it's associated with the FiO2 of greater than 0.6 for more than 24 hours at one atmosphere. The mechanism of oxygen toxicity. So the electron transport chain ETC. Oxygen is reduced to water by the transfer of electrons. In the presence of excess oxygen, there's leakage of electrons and hydrogen, leading to the formation of reactive oxygen species of oxygen-free radicals. Important ones include hydrogen peroxide and superoxide ions. These have one or more unpaired electrons and therefore free to interact with surrounding tissue, leading to the damage of DNA, RNA and cellular membranes. And under normal conditions, antioxidants remove reactive oxygen species but in these conditions they are overwhelmed. As we discussed, hypoxia can lead to direct lung injury due to increased production of reactive oxygen species, causing damage to epithelial membrane surfaces and surfactant. This causes abnormal fluid shifts and cytokine production, leading to the activation of inflammation and the coagulation cascade, and thus forming thrombin. Persistent inflammation can lead to pulmonary fibrosis, which is a chronic irreversible state. The symptomatology for patients presenting with symptoms of hypoxemia largely affect the lung, and this could be any respiratory symptom, and the CNS, involving headaches, visual, auditory, and behavioural changes, in addition to seizures. Patients may also report chest pain and vomiting. The uses of hyperbaric oxygen treatment are broad. For example, carbon monoxide poisoning. This is based on Henry's law. Henry's law states the amount of an ideal gas dissolved in the solution is directly proportional to its partial pressure. Thus, increasing FiO2 or using hyperbaric oxygen treatment leads to an increase in the partial pressure of arterial oxygen and thus reducing the half-life of carbon monoxide from 300 minutes in room air into hyperbaric conditions of 3 atmospheres to 20 minutes. Also, for cluster headaches to reduce pain, to improve wound healing and decompression illness. The use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy for decompression illness is based on Boyle's law the volume of nitrogen bubble is inversely related to the partial pressure exerted upon it. At three atmosphere, the bubble volume decreases by approximately two thirds. This allows replacement with oxygen. Complications from hypoxia are broad. In adults, they can cause loss of respiratory drive, leading to lung injury, as discussed. They can increase infarct size and lead to arrhythmias in patients with an MI. And stroke patients have an increased mortality and morbidity. In neonates, it can have retinopathy of prematurity and bronchopulmonary dysplasia. The chemotherapeutic agent bleomycin for the treatment of germ cell cancers, SCCs and lymphomas, can lead to dose-related progressive pulmonary fibrosis. This can occur at room air at one atmosphere, and these effects are increased when breathing higher partial pressures of oxygen. And this is due to the increased production of reactive oxygen species. Please like and subscribe.